Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and we're in part two of a series where we're using serverless functions on the Zite Now platform to dynamically generate social share images. If you take a look at Slack here, I've shared my blog and an article on dev.to, and you see how popping in are these images. Uh, the OG image uh, tag in HTML contains uh, something that links to these, and they're being dynamically generated. In part one, we've got this beautiful yellow thing going on with this llama Justin Bieber, but it's all hard-coded right now. So even though I've passed the title as a query param, it's not using it, and that's gonna be the purpose of this video right here, how to parse the URL to get the query parameters that we need. So if you come back here, we've got the card.ts file, which has all of this HTML right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and we'll call it the parser because it's gonna parse out the URL. And the first thing we're gonna import is the incoming message from HTTP, which is the same one we imported back here in card and that is the request that's coming into this handler function. And we'll need one more thing that we're gonna import, which is parse from URL. So those are the two things. And we're going to export a function and we'll just call it uh, export function parse rex. Okay, and this is going to receive the request here, which is the incoming message. And what it's going to return is basically an object that contains all of the parsed out query params that we're going to use. So what query params do we need? Let's declare an interface here and we'll call it um, parsed rex, um, like that. And so we're gonna need the author, um, this Lee Halliday here, and that will be a string. We're gonna need the title of the article. We will need the website, which is uh, this part down here. And we're gonna need a, a URL for this image here. So we'll just call that image like that. So first things first, we need to parse the URL, uh, which is in this request object here. And from that, we can start to, to grab the query params that are inside of it. So the first thing we will do is we'll say const, and we'll say query equals an empty object equals parse. So parse is a function where you're supposed to send it a URL. So we'll send it rec.url. Uh, the request contains this property here. Now it may be undefined um, according to TypeScript, so we'll just put or empty string just to keep TypeScript happy. And as the second um, argument we're passing to this function, we want to tell it true that we do want it to parse the query string because that's where all the info is going to be contained. So now that we got this query variable here, let's uh, destructure, extract all of the individual author, title, website, etc. So we'll say author, title, website, oh boy, disaster, okay, is equal query. So now we got all these things here, but you can see that TypeScript is telling us that well, query params can either be a single value or an array of values or an array of strings. We don't want any arrays here, so we just gotta write a few uh, if statements to ensure that no arrays were passed. So we'll say if array dot is array author. So what we'll do is just, we'll throw a new error. Um, author must be string. So that keeps author happy. So we'll just do this three more times for the title like that, for the website like that, and for the image, beautiful. Okay, so now that we're sure that all of these are single strings, they're not arrays, um, we'll put them in uh, an object. So we'll say const parsed rex, like that. What's the type of this? It is this interface up here we've declared, and it's equal to author title website image, like that. So now that we have this, 
into a variable. If we want, we can console.log it just to make sure that it's working correctly and it's picking things up the way we want. So we need to pass a string to this, so we can say json.stringify this parsed rex, and then we'll just return it. Oh boy. Cool. So now that we have this written, this file written, let's import it into card and start to use it. So we're gonna import parse rex from parser, and we need to remove this underscore because we are going to use the rec variable now. So what we'll say is, um, for now we'll just say parse rex, we gotta pass in the rec like that. Okay, so let's spin up, um, I'm just gonna stop this and start it again. And we'll add in the other uh, variable, the query params that we need. So we're going to need the title, which we got. We're going to need an image and an author. So author is Lee and website is leehalliday.com. And image is this long thing. So if we visit the URL and go look in the console, we should see all of these parsed recs. Um, here, there we go. So we see that we have the author, the title, the website, and the image all output nicely here. So now we wanna start using them. So let's come back and refactor our code a little bit. We're going to be using this interface again. So let's cut it from this file and put it in a types.d.ts file, which TypeScript will sort of automatically use global in your project. Um, so we don't have to sort of import it everywhere that we want it. Okay. And now that we've done that, the next thing we want to do is move this big chunk of HTML out of this file. So we'll just cut it. And we'll put it in a new file called template.ts. So this file will export a function called getHTML, and it will receive the parsed rex, which is of type parsed rex, and it's going to return some HTML, exactly like that. So it's missing a couple things. Um, it's missing us actually embedding the values in here, so let's do that. We'll first destructure them into variables. So we've got author title website image equals parsed rex. And now we can come down in here into this uh, template literal and just embed them. So we have the author. No, that's the title, right? Yeah. So we've got the image here. We've got the author here. And then we've got the website down here. Okay. Uh, it's complaining a little bit about here, but uh, I've tried this and seen this before and it will just, I don't think it'll be an issue. So let's keep going. So we come back to card. I should have put this in the try, right? So we'll do that now. And what does parse rex return? It returns the parsed rex like that and now we will import the get html function from template and we'll use that to get some html so the html is equal to get html pass in the parsed rex and this code should now work again cuz we've got that chunk of html we're passing it to end so let's Try refreshing the page. Let's restart TypeScript. Because we're adding new files to this, I've seen this before where it has issues when it's it's got a new file that you're referencing. That I think it's the TypeScript watch command. So if we actually just reload this, hopefully it will work. Um, it's parsing all of our code right now and sort of setting things up. And there we go. 
and it's showing the dynamic title here, which came from the query param. We could change this back to generating OG image, and you can see that that's being filled in here. So the last thing we can do before this video is done is why don't we just make it look nice? I've got some pre-written um, CSS. Actually, why don't we just go to the to my GitHub? We'll go to the one that I've published for my own website, and we'll just copy the CSS from this one. It's not in card, it's in template. Okay, so we will just copy all of this CSS, because I'm definitely not gonna write 100 lines of CSS right now. So let's come back to this file, the template, and let's create a new function called getCSS, which will return all of that CSS I just copied from sort of the finished version. Uh, a lot of this is just that Meyer web reset down to like here. And then we're styling sort of the container, the title, the author, the author image website. Just um, in this, you can actually position it absolutely and not care because it's always going to be rendered in a browser that's the same size because as you'll see in video four, we define the size of the browser. So you can worry a little bit less about making things responsive when you're doing this. So now that we've got our get CSS function, let's replace this here with get CSS like that. And if we refresh the page, cross our fingers, oh my. It's really having some issues, eh? Change callback, no idea. All right, so now we'll refresh, cross our fingers again, and there we go. So here is the sort of thing you're used to seeing in here. Right now it's still just HTML, it's not an image. So in part three, what we're gonna move into is basically writing all of the HTML we produce to a temporary file. And part four, we're going to be rendering that temporary HTML file in a headless Chrome browser, which can then take a snapshot of that. And that produces the image that you see when it's embedded here. That's it for this. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part three and four, where we do the temp file and then the actual uh, headless Chrome browser. Take care.